Welcome to the knowledge series of IT Partshala. This tutorial video is the third part of logic building module. Our learners are advised to go through the first and second parts of logic building module before proceeding with this video. In this video, we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using flowcharting as a logic modeling tool. We will also let you make a sample flowchart towards the end of this tutorial. Each symbol will have one line coming into the symbol and one line going out. The only exception to this rule is the diamond or decision box which can have two lines. Lines should never cross. Every symbol should be appropriately leveled with a short explanation of that logic step. The flowcharts are both simple to understand and easy to create. Since most programmers and most people in general tend to prefer concepts explained visually, the flowcharts are perfect. Seeing the logic in front of you makes it easy to discuss the purpose of the program. Flowcharts are less intimidating than pseudocodes. With flowcharts applications like Microsoft's Visio, even people with the weakest of artistic skills can put together a flowchart quickly and efficiently. Flowcharting is a better tool to reach an unbiased ideal logic model solution. It is always much easier to formulate a high level plan with a quick drawing than with the English-like statements of pseudocode which seems to draw you into the details too soon. The first disadvantage comes from the difficulty in drawing sophisticated logic without spanning several pieces of paper. Either the symbols need to be resized to microscopic level when looking at complicated logic or the reader will need a large table to line up the multiple pages of the flowchart. The second disadvantage stems from the artistic nature of the drawing which can be difficult for some programmers. Drawing softwares, for example Microsoft Visio, goes a long way towards eliminating this problem but if one is left with a ruler and pencil, the assembling of the chart takes some practice. Until one gets the hang of it, flowcharts may require going through a few pencils and erasers. Sometimes it might be difficult to translate the flowcharting logic into programming language. The organization that you work for is in need of a tool that will calculate the cost of a product purchased with a foreign currency and you have been assigned the responsibility to create a logic model for it using flowcharts. The sales department of your organization has customers from Canada and Mexico. Your catalogs on the website express all the prices in US dollars. It has been decided that the easiest way to provide support for foreign customers is to create a program which will allow the customers to convert the prices of the items into their currency instead of US dollars. For example, if the Canadian customer purchases a skateboard for $1.50, that $1.50 would need to be multiplied by a factor of approximately 1.2 to convert the prices into Canadian dollars. In this case, the customer will need to pay 60 Canadian dollars for the item that costs 50 US dollars. You have been assigned the responsibility to create a logic model for this project using flowcharts. In this sample flowchart, symbol A represents the terminator symbol which is used to indicate the start of the logic model. Symbol B represents a parallelogram which is used for input or output operations and in this case to capture information about the amount of the item from the keyboard. Symbol C represents another parallelogram which is used this time to input the conversion factor used to convert dollars into the currency of the customer. Symbol D represents a rectangle which is used to document the calculation step which will take amounts and multiply that times the currency factor. Symbol E represents a parallelogram again this time to display output the screen in the form of reported message displaying the results of the calculation done in the previous step. Symbol F represents another terminator symbol. This one is used to indicate the end of the logic. Third part of our logic building module ends here. We'll be covering the remaining topics of logic building module in the fourth part of this module. In that video, we'll talk about the pseudocodes as a logic modeling tool and let you write a few sample codes.